I ask you to remain standing as I read the gospel lesson from Luke, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Hear now the word of the Lord. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man named Zacchaeus. He was one of the most influential Jews in the Roman tax collecting business, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowds. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree beside the road so he could watch from there. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down, for I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the crowds were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have overcharged people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a son of Abraham. And I, the son of man, have come to seek and save those like him who are lost. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, Becky talked about Jesus dining with a Pharisee. We learned that this man was concerned with keeping the law and was part of the religious establishment. And that made him very respectable, a pillar of the community. However, his heart was hard and not open to a relationship with Jesus Christ. He was too preoccupied with keeping the rules and wasn't present in the moment. Even though Jesus was sitting at his table, he really didn't see Jesus or pay much attention to him. This week, I'm going to talk about Jesus going to Zacchaeus' house spending time with him and sharing table fellowship. Now, the Pharisee was very well respected in town. Zacchaeus is on the other end of the spectrum. He is a Jewish tax collector. That means that he worked in close relationship with the Romans who were occupying Israel. Thus, he inter interacted with the Gentile oppressors as part of his job. These interactions made him ritually unclean and unacceptable to Jewish people who were interested in keeping the Jewish laws. His working with the Romans almost made him seem like a traitor also because he was collaborating with the enemy and helping them make money. In addition, the way the Romans set up their tax collecting system, especially for a head tax collector like Zacchaeus, was that Rome told the tax collector how much they needed to collect. And that was it. The tax collector was free to collect as much as they wanted as long as the Roman government got its due. So tax collectors were seen as those who engaged in extortion and embezzlement because the more taxes they collected, the more money they made. And we've heard that Zacchaeus was a very wealthy person. So people like Zacchaeus got rich by taking money from their own people. Thus, they were assumed to be dishonest and were reviled by other Jewish people. They were what I like to call shakedown artists who profited from their position and took advantage of their kinspeople in service to the imperial occupying force. That's who Zacchaeus was. 
The thing is, even though Zacchaeus was a reviled tax collector, his heart was soft. For whatever reason, he really wanted to see Jesus more than anything. When he couldn't get a look at Jesus because he was too short to see over the crowds that were following Jesus, he figured out the route that Jesus was going to take and ran ahead of him. Now, that doesn't sound like that big a deal to us, but in Roman society, adults didn't run. It was undignified. They needed to walk in a stately manner. So Zacchaeus was willing to act undignified to get a look at Jesus. And not only did he run, when he got to a space, he climbed up in a tree. Now, <laughs> that shows how eager he was to see Jesus. But can you imagine the scene? Here is a person who is loathed by society, but has great standing in society, very wealthy, up in a tree. I'm guessing the crowds were pointing at him and laughing and just making fun of him because of how eager he was to see Jesus. The thing is, his actions showed how open he was to experiencing Jesus. He was fully present in the moment, and Jesus noticed. In fact, as we read, Jesus looked up in the tree and offered Zacchaeus the opportunity to form a relationship with him because Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' house. And that made Zacchaeus very happy. He eagerly escorted Jesus to his house. Now you might be thinking, why would Jesus do this? But when Jesus looked at Zac Zacchaeus, he didn't see a reviled tax collector. He looked past the outer shell the things that seemingly made Zacchaeus unworthy of table fellowship or a relationship with the Lord and asked to join him at his table because Jesus saw Zacchaeus as a beloved child of God. A beloved child who was interested in actually meeting the Lord. So when Jesus joined Zacchaeus at his house, he showed Zacchaeus that he was a child of God and worthy of love and acceptance. Jesus affirming his innate worth and acceptability caused a change in Zacchaeus' life and his heart. He immediately promised to give half of his wealth to the poor and to make restitution to those he had cheated. He was going to give back four times as much money as he had taken from them. He promised Jesus that he would turn from the unjust things he had been doing. That, my friends, is what we call repentance. When we repent, it means that we're not just sorry about something that we've done, but we are ready to change our actions so that we won't continue to do wrong. We truly understand the error of our ways and want to do better. Now, the way Jesus interacts with Zacchaeus is powerful. By showing God's love to him, Jesus brought about a change in Zacchaeus' heart and life. Now, there are many people in our world today that are like Zacchaeus to us. They are deemed unworthy, unapproachable, dishonest, beyond help. They are people that we don't really want to eat with or 
to have a relationship with. However, they are just as worthy of relationship as we are. They are beloved children of God, just like we are. And many of them will have soft hearts like Zacchaeus did. These hearts are open and ready for a relationship with the Lord if only someone will show them the love that God has for them. Friends, that's what we're called to do, to embody Christ's love and show that to others, no matter who they are. Now, Becky and I were at a conference last week up at Junaluska. It was beautiful. And we heard a phrase that really resonated with me. It says that we can love people to life. That's what Jesus did with Zacchaeus. He showed him love that led him to abundant life. Now, Zacchaeus was living, but he didn't have abundant life. Abundant life is found when we have a relationship with the Lord and are able to grow into loving, compassionate people, the people that God created us to be. If we are willing, we, every one of us, can love people to life by seeing past their outer shells and recognizing that they are beloved children of God and then loving them like God does. Now, Father Greg Boyle is someone who does this. He sees the divine image in people deemed beyond hope and help. In 1986, Father Boyle became the pastor of a church in the poorest Catholic parish in Los Angeles, California. This area had the highest concentration of gang activity in Los Angeles, a city known for gang activity. However, when he looked at those gang members, Father Boyle didn't see criminals. He saw people who were beloved children of God in need of love and acceptance. And this viewpoint led him to start Homeboy Industries, which has evolved into the largest gang intervention rehab and reentry program in the world. Homeboy Industries employs and trains former gang members in a range of social enterprises as well as provides critical services to thousands of men and women who come through their doors every year seeking a better life. Homeboy Industries has achieved this success because they treat all people they encounter, gang member or not, as beloved children of God made in the divine image. That's what Jesus did with Zacchaeus. And just like Jesus, Father Boyle and Homeboy Industries have achieved miraculous results. They are able to turn lives around because they recognize the innate worth and dignity of all the people that they encounter. Now, this past week I got on Homeboy Industries' website and I read a lot of the stories of transformation. And there were probably 25 of them. Those people have been loved to life by Father Boyle and his team. And I urge you to get on that website and look at what people can do to show God's love to everybody. My friends, God is constantly showing divine love to us and repeatedly offering to be in relationship with us. Thankfully, God never gives up on us, on nobody. Zacchaeus wanted more than anything to see Jesus, and that led to an encounter where he got to know the Lord, and it changed his life. He became a much more loving, kind, and just person because he had been loved. 
Because of his encounter with Jesus, he was trans and started to become that God created him to be. Father Boyle introduces gang members to the Lord by loving them as God does. God is using Father Boyle to show divine love that results in transformed lives and abundant life. That's what life is for all of us, or at least it should be. It's a series of encounters with God where God sees and meets us where we are and seeks to form a relationship with us. Sometimes our hearts are hard and we aren't open to a relationship with the Lord. But when our hearts are soft and open to God, like Zacchaeus's was, we will be ready to accept the relationship that God offers us. This relationship will be the best thing in our lives because it will fill us with divine love and enable us to become the kind, loving, compassionate, justice-oriented people that God created us to be. We will have abundant life. And then we can go out and show that kind of love and acceptance to all people that we encounter, just like Father Boyle does. We can show them Jesus Christ by the way we love and accept all people. And then the people we love can form a relationship with the Lord and go on to share that love with others. we would actually be able to create a virtuous circle where people are loved by God, are filled with that love, go out and love others who then continue the process. Think what the world would be like if we all showed acceptance and love to others like Jesus did. Friends, I pray that we will all be so filled with the Holy Spirit that we will see the divine image in everyone we encounter and recognize their divine work. And when we do, God will be able to use us to love people to life. Thanks be to God.